any glass object made by a hot process, whether it's casting, fusing and slumping, or in this case glass blowing, has to be followed by annealing. Here, a Roman-style bottle is placed into an annealing oven. The object will sit in the oven at a temperature of about 900 degrees until the end of the day, at which time the oven is turned off and the oven gradually cools to room temperature over about a 12-hour period. During the gradual cooling of the oven, the glass cools slowly as well. The thickest and the thinnest parts cool at the same rate and lose volume at the same rate, thereby avoiding any stress or strain that might develop and crack the glass. Here a similar object is being broken off its punty and it's going to be allowed to cool quickly. This is a time-lapse sequence. The leftmost number is minutes. In about eight minutes, you'll see the handle pop off. That's because the thin vessel body is cooling very quickly, and the thicker handle is cooling very slowly. At their junction, tremendous stress develops, and they crack and break apart. This is a sponge to show you about tension in glass. If glass is under compression, when it's squeezed together, it's very strong. When it's under tension and pulled apart, glass is very weak. And we want to show you about stress in glass. This is our polariscope. It shows up stress in glass. When we take a piece that's under stress and show it to you, you can see that Maltese cross on the bottom. This one was only annealed for 10 minutes. This was properly annealed. You can see there's no stress in that. If there was no annealing and we left it out, the glass would crack because of internal stresses. The stress actually changes the refractive index in the glass and shows up as rainbows. One of these horses was annealed and the other one wasn't. You can see the rainbows in the one that wasn't annealed. I can introduce stress in glass by putting pressure on it. This is a piece of Pyrex rod, and if I push on it, you can see stress introduced.